and uh, they were drinking right out of the spring when I walked up there. But I didn't get to see the little one. I just got a tiny glimpse of it, you know. But the big one, I got about 20 seconds. Hit on film. What spring was that? D-Duck Springs. Okay. Paul Freeman, for those of you who don't know him, uh, Paul has been finding Bigfoot since you had your first sighting in 82, was it? Yep. Yeah. And he worked up in the watershed for the Walla Walla at the time. Okay, and he was also uh, instrumental in finding the first tracks that brought Grover Krantz to the area and sort of a, established the science of a, a dermal ridges. And these are like fingerprints, only they were found on the feet. I had dropped, uh, one of them to bring a track, but uh, Paul said he did. Yeah, I got a couple there now. Okay, Sacks they showed the dermal ridges. Was that the one in the ancient mystery where we showed the uh, dermal ridges? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I brought uh, the original, one of the original tracks that was in the road in, uh, in 82. The other one is a D-Duck Frank track where I, uh, where I took a video. <clears throat> this, is a, this is one of the tracks that had the dermal ridges on it. Yeah, Pass this around, you guys, and everybody can see it. Oh, yeah. Stand up here. Close were you to the creature? Oh, I was probably 100 area. yards from it uh, when I first seen it, and then it got about you know, within about 60 yards. Now, this is a this is a track in uh, August 20th uh, in '92. This is the one I took the video of the Bee Duck Springs. Wow! It was there were two of them, this big one and the smaller one. And uh, they were drinking right out of the spring when I walked up there. But I didn't get to see the little one. I just got a tiny glimpse of it, you know. But the big one, I got about 20 seconds. Hit on film. What spring was that? D-Duck Springs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was 1992? Yeah. Where's that at, the general area? Well, it's uh, at the east of... Uh, Kind of southeast of Walla Walla, about 25, 30 miles up the sort of mountains. The the yeah, it was, it was up on the, it was about uh, 3,500 feet. And this is a, this is a handprint here. I got out of a kind of sandy bank uh, in 95. Wow. But, uh, and I, uh, you can even see the fingernails on it. But it's a lot different than a human hand. The thumb sets further back, quite a ways. Anyway, it was, it was, it was setting like this, and it was digging in the, digging in the, in the bank there, and it just kind of holding itself up with his other hand. And I poured the plaster, and I didn't know it was going to turn out or not. Turned out pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you can see. Yeah, you can lay your, you can lay your hand down in there and tell us. But we did have, we did have five of them. That come through there. They never, they never lived there. They just come and travel through. And now there's only three of them. They come through. Recasting. 
you can't see them improve from that one to that one. Yeah. Learn what you're doing. Oh. Well, this is a copy here. I've got the original. Oh. oh. And that one was took there. That one was took right in the lobby. Really good. Right is this the, the original here? Yeah. Well, that's here. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about your first sighting? <clears throat> well, about two weeks, about two weeks before I seen the, I seen the critter. We've been hearing these little squealing, whistling noises, and uh, asked the, the fellow I work with, he's my supervisor. I asked him, I said, "What's making that noise?" And he said, "Oh, those are." Those are young bull elk squealing. I said, no. I said, I never heard an elk squeal like that in my life. You know, and I've, I've been a hunter and trapper ever since I was a little kid with my dad. And uh, he said, well, that's what they are. And uh, we went on and went on. We kept hearing them every day. And uh, one day a week, we did our our circle in a, in a pickup. We had to take water samples and, and uh, halfway, about three quarters away around the watershed there's a road. And you could drive around that. And uh, one day a week on Friday was when we did that. And uh, I was just up there and I seen these elk coming around the hillside running above the road. And uh, I thought, well, I'll get out and see what they're running from. I, got, I couldn't drive up this little logging spur, so I parked the truck and locked it up. And, and I had to walk about, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a mile up in there. And I just coming around the road, made a S curve like that, and I was coming around this part of it. I just happened to look up and this thing was coming off the bank right in the road. It seen me about the same time I seen it. And uh, I didn't have nothing but a jackknife in my body. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just kind of stopped because it acted like it was going to jump on me. The hair stood up on the shoulders and the head, and it just kind of was frowning at me. And it had been running because I could see its stomach moving, you know, when it was breathing. And I thought, well, hell, it's going to jump on me. The only thing I can do is back up, you know. So I started backing up, just slowly. And I hung my heel on a rock and pretty much fell down. <laughs> and, and when I got straightened up again and looked at it and it turned around and was walking away going up the road and every once in a while he looked back at me you know see where I was at so as quick as it got I watched it walk probably for I don't know maybe two three hundred yards up the road and went over a little hill and it went out of sight so I turned and run for the truck uh, well don't catch me do catch me running <laughs> I got down to the truck and I couldn't even get the damn door open with the keys. I yeah, oh, brought my keys. <laughs> Finally got the truck door open, got turned around, started down the road. Trying to call on the radio, I couldn't even get nobody because I don't know if I had the button. Are you scared? Yeah, I was scared. <laughs> and uh, I got on down to the main cabin there where, the, where we started out from in the morning. And we have a caretaker there stays there and watches the leaves and stuff so they don't get clogged in the pipes. And stuff. He says I went right by him. I never even seen him. I went right by him. He was mowing the grass <coughs> and went in to the, to the station there and was trying to get on the radio to call the uh, main office. I never could get it to work. He finally wound up calling him. This is on Mill Creek in 82? Yeah. And so why did you think it was chasing the hell? Well, I think it was feeding on him, or was going to feed on him. What makes you think that? Well, well since then, I've heard before. Uh, since then, I found a few elk that they caught and killed. So I know they feed on him. They feed on about anything they can get their hands on. Except uh, they don't seem like they bother domestic stock. You know, uh, they may. I'm sure that the clicker up there, he owns most of the. Most of the land around the watershed, him and Barn Eastman. And I'm sure they have cattle every year, you know, one or two if they don't find. But 
Now, how did you go about killing them, or what traces did you find? Just run them down, I suppose. I, I, I've never found any tools that they've uh, used or anything. I think they just run them down and catch them. Uh, and then? Yeah. And just beat them, just mutilate them, and tear them all to pieces. How, how do you mean tear them to pieces? I just beat them on the ground, beat them on the bushes, beat them on the trees, and break their neck. Right? I've got pictures where they just their their intro are hanging up in the bushes and everything where they just bust them. And they just tear their legs and stuff right off hide and all. But uh, they feed on everything. They feed on roots, berries, certain kind of plants, fish, they eat, they eat anything and everything. An animal that big has got to eat, you know, they've got to at least eat. 40 to 60 pounds of vegetation. How big was the one you saw? Uh, it, was, it was probably as tall as the ceiling. Seven and a half, eight feet. Well, there was a fir tree there I took the, when I was taking pictures with the camera. <coughs> that went by and we measured that fir tree. It was 16 foot 6 inches and it was pretty halfway up on the tree. This is the one you took the video of to show yeah, the video? Yeah. Can you tell us about that incident? Well, I just, <clears throat> I was telling Peter earlier that I, the summer before, they, they, they'd come through that area nine times. They'd been to that spring nine times. i have seen their tracks around it in July and August. That's a dew duck? Dew duck, yeah. And uh, I thought, well, I'll go up there and just make a stand and start watching. So I was going up there every morning before daylight, staying till dark at night. I'd done that for about two weeks. And one morning I was going to go with my daughter. She had to crawl into her car, so I had to work on it. And uh, it was about 9 o'clock when I got up there. And I walked right up on it. I didn't, like I said, I didn't get to see the little one. I just got a glimpse of it. It went up the old kind of an old jeep trail up over the bank and got into the bush. I could hear the brush and stuff popping up there, so I just run around up there with my camera. And one was just coming out from behind some bushes and went across kind of a little opening and just went into the bush again and I never seen him after that. I had, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds of it. When was that? It was uh, uh, August 20th. 82? No, uh, 92. 92. Yeah. This, uh, this was a track that was right in the, right in the edge of the pond where they were standing. And then they just, they kind of went out into the pond and just come right back up and onto the bank. And it was sort of, How were they drinking? Were they just cupping the water? I don't, I don't know. I didn't, oh. I didn't get to see them drinking. They just, uh, I just seen them as they run out of there, you know. So that's the second time you saw one then after? No, I've seen them uh, four times in, in uh, 15 years. Some very much twice I've seen them, they were a long ways off. And I took video of uh, one time, but uh, you see something moving, but you couldn't tell what it was. And then in uh, 1988, my oldest son, he got some pretty good still pictures. All in the same area? Yeah. There's a lot of reports of not that too. Is that Malawa area? No, well, no, it's uh, Malawa. Yeah, Malawa. it's uh, up there in like the Blue Mountains, just oh. east of Walla Walla. Oh. Okay. Well, you said there were five and there are only three now. Do you yeah, two of them left. Uh, there was five of them that come through there all the time. And, and uh, one summer, the uh, spring there, that we were Going up there, we found the ridge top. They all just tore up trees, were pulled up out of the ground, and pushed it all off little trees. And after that, two of them left. I don't know. They left for the left for the big one to come in there. Or uh, something. I don't know. They either died off or they just you know, left for another one. Or something. We never did uh, find any sign. Yeah. But now they're just uh, they're just an old female with two. Smaller, but they're pretty good size. They're probably uh, 
12, 15, 16 years old, maybe. But uh, the last, uh, this summer, we hardly seen any, no sign at all. And uh, last summer, we had very little, just once or twice, we've seen some signs, we haven't seen any after that. Yeah. Other than the facts of him coming out where they live, I've, uh, I've got beds uh, packed out of the mountains and stuff. Uh, I've looked in every cave and overhang and... No hair? Oh yeah, I've got lots of hair samples. Yeah. Where did you get some of them? Some of them prove uh, out to be, uh, they think they put hair and then some of it's just bare hair. And some of it's not even hair, I think. <coughs> Jim knows all about that. The one that turned out to be a, kind of a fungus. Yeah, you found some somewhere. Where was it? Uh, I didn't find it. I think you talked about it. I'm not sure what you talked about. Well, it's, it's some, some uh, we thought it was hair, but then they, they said it wasn't uh, hair. It was uh, some kind of a fungus that uh, comes out of the sap on the, on the fir trees that they uh, just look like you just it looks like hair, but it's not hair. Uh, Henner, I think Dr. Henner said uh, he thought it might be uh, some kind of stuffing out of uh, some kind of a furniture or something that they've, yeah, they've been into or something. I was wondering about that. Yeah. 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 You ever pick up any odors? Yeah. Sometimes they, you smell a real strong odor and then sometimes you don't. It just depends. I think they... I think they can throw that off like a skunk, you know. If they get real excited or you surprise them, I think they can throw that off like a skunk. And then I noticed uh, in early spring, they're real shaggy looking, you know, and nasty looking. Their hair is all matted and stuff. Further along through the summer, they start shedding off and slicking up, and they get real shiny. They don't, you don't smell that smell anymore. It may be... Uh, wherever they stay or something, they wallow around in their own dung and, and uh, they carry them. Maybe they eat you know, through the winter and stick to them. I don't know, maybe they just, you know, they pee on themselves. Did you smell at the time you got so scared? The first time yeah, you saw them? Yeah, 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 the first time, but uh, when I took the video, I didn't smell them at all. They were real pretty shiny. New hair. Um, the handprint. Um, was there only one that you found? No, no, I've got more. Oh, okay. Of that same time? It was yeah. And was that in the same area? Yeah. Yeah, I've got three different handprints, uh, three different individuals. Wow. They're all different sizes. Yeah. Interesting how broad it is. Your fingers are terribly yeah. large. Fat. The digits. You mentioned caves. Uh, what did you ever find in caves? Never found anything in any caves. Or you know, they just. Uh, I don't think. I don't think they live in caves. I found lots and lots of their beds, and they're always up on the ridge top, out on the end of the point or something, you know, where they can see everything that you can see them. And they And they only seem like they only stay there maybe a day or two, and they're gone. You know. Were they brown? Well, the, the first one I seen was the reddish brown, and the one I took the picture of was real dark, pretty much black. But, uh, they see them all over, I guess, different colors. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine up there, Wes Summerlin, he's seen one up there as a called the buckskin female, she's buckskin color. Um, are brown bears always the same color? No. No. Black bears. Black bears. Black bears. Huh? They can be. A brown bear can be black. The brown bear is yeah. a black bear. Oh, not really. But black bears can be brown or red. Or black bears can be, they can, they can be a lot of colors. They're even white. Really? Now there's an island up here off the, well, off the, the coast of Canada. They, they, they're twilights <laughs> that live on there. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> they can be they can be uh, cinnamon color, black, brown, white, red. Yeah. 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 The last sighting you had was in '92. Yeah. What were the beds made of? Oh, just uh, grass and fir boughs and stuff that they seem like they scrape up and make them thick. Some of them. Two foot thick, with a nine feet long, and four or five feet wide, just like an S. You know. <laughs> but I've got uh, I've got three of those. I've got many stories. I've packed them all around. You brought the whole bed out? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we had to reassemble. You know, like yeah. it was. We took pictures of them, and we just gathered it all up, put it in bags. And Run down and put it back together. What was it made of? No, it just made of uh, fir boughs and leaves and long grass, like that buffalo grass. And, and so, you know, swamp grass, whatever, whatever it's around, it didn't make it out of it. Did it smell? Yeah. It did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of hair in it? Some hair and some of them, some of them didn't have any. A lot of times they had a lot of. Uh, Cabins, you know. Really? Yeah, or, you know, like they've seen where the cows lay at night. Mm-hmm. Like that, yeah. <laughs> Have they put their own nest like a gorilla would? Oh, yeah. Were these always out in the open or were any of them back there in the open? Well, <coughs> I've never seen any in overhangs or any in caves. They're always out on the top of the ridge. And you can see everything from where they're at. Can't see them if you're down, you know. It seems like they just know, you know, they've got the place there where they can see everything that's coming. You can't see them. When you saw that one for the first time, do you think that um, had you stood your ground, would it attack you? I, my brain said run. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a gun, yeah, the first thing I'd done shot it if I had a gun. Is that right? But I didn't have one, so. If you, if you had stood your ground, what do you think it would have done? That's well, fine. I don't know. Maybe maybe it would have jumped on me. Maybe it would just turn and run, too. You know, I don't know. Well, I mean, as big as they are, how can you... Uh, well, they don't seem like they're real aggressive towards people. You know, you never hear of any people being attacked by them or anything. And every time that I've seen them, they're always trying to get away. They're real shy. And did you have any of that scat analyzed? Oh, yeah. Well, what yeah. do they say? Well, it's like I was telling Peter, every time you do that, well, it seems like it gets lost or something else. Or I've got a berries or bones? Or? Oh, yeah, they're full of, uh, it's full of uh, coyote, uh, what do you think we found? Coyote teeth in it, coyote bones. <laughs> Fish bones, uh, mice, mice bones and hair, you know, everything. Really? Yeah. I think they eat whatever, they're, they're kind of like, you know, bears, they eat whatever they get a hold of, you know, if they run onto a dead carcass, so if it ain't too bad, I think they eat. How about plant remains? Well, yeah, they eat, yeah, plant, plant fibers, all oh, those little uh, yellow bell, Like a little lily, uh, chemists, fruits, uh, bulbs, uh, mushrooms. You found this in the scout? Oh, yeah. Sometimes it goes through them just like a bear. You know, it goes through them so fast that they don't digest it. Moss, a lot of moss, lichen. No, but no trees. No elk bones around. Oh yeah, all kind of deer bones, everything. Yeah, elk hair, deer hair. We sent some uh, some hair to uh, Dr. Henner over here at the Beaverton there at the Primate Center last year, and he sent it to Ohio State University to the lab back there, and they were going to do DNA on it. Well, it Took them a long time to get it done, but uh, they just kind of shut it up. You know, it's just haven't got no reports on it or anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, 
it was uh, the DNA, I guess, quite a process to do with that. But anyway, he said when it lined up on top of each other, like it normally does, what well, just you know, they couldn't get anything out of it. It just, just went away. Yeah, well, I don't understand it either, but I'm not a scientist. But, uh, it disappeared as it keeps lining up. No, it just, they just couldn't get anything out of it, I guess. So, anyway, they just shut it up. We're supposed to hear something about it here pretty soon, I guess. But, uh, Might not have had enough stuff in it. Yeah, they had plenty. I assume they had plenty of it. They, they had enough. Oh, really? It was on TV that they were going to have a report. It, uh, it was it's supposed to be a report to come out on here, I think, uh, around the first of the year or something. I haven't talked to uh, to Henner, but I'm going to call him and see what he's heard, if he's heard anything else. Yeah, because that was a big thing on uh, on TV. Oh, yeah. And then they just shut up about it. Yeah, well, that's the way they do it. Yeah, all the reports. I sent, uh, I sent some hair to Scotland Yard in England. And, uh, <laughs> They said, yeah, they do the report on it, and I never did hear back from it. Are you still going up to this area? No. No, I quit it. I'm going to quit it. Yeah, just that there, you haven't seen anything recently, or you just... Well, it just I got a bad foot. I broke my arch in my foot, and I can't walk no more. And Is there anybody else that's continuing Oh, yeah, there's, the yeah, there's uh, uh, Wes Summerlin and, and Bill Lowry and David Bean from up there. They're going to... Have they ever had any sightings, or? Wes, uh, uh, Wes and uh, Bill Laurie and I uh, uh, seen one, well, three seen them at the same time. And it run uh, close from here to that slider down there to me. And jumped, a, jumped an old trail and went down over the hill. But uh, yeah, Wes and Bill, they still looked at it for, oh, I don't know, 15 seconds probably before it started running. <coughs> I wanted to know where they were at, so I let out the yell, I said, where are you guys at? And the thing just, they said just exploded. It was all running. And it pretty near run into me. But uh, nobody believed it until we all three seen it. Now everybody, you know, they all believe yeah, it now. Yeah. Yeah. As a practicing veterinarian, I became quite proficient in telling the difference between scat. Yeah. And horse scat, and bull scat, and sheep scat, and pig scat, and cat scat all spell different. Oh, yeah. Does uh, yeah. Bigfoot scat have its distinctive uh, signature? Yeah. It, I can tell he's barking at night. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Everything smells different, you know. Pig. No, no. Pig All manure. horse cat smells the same whether it's got Pig manure stinks. <laughs> we used to raise hogs, so I know what it smells like. Yeah, and it smells the same in Oregon or Iowa. That's or right, yeah, wherever you find it, it smells the same. About, and it has its own distinctive uh, flavor. Right. As, as uh, Bigfoot cat got its distinctive signature. That smells smell like, it smells, it smells a lot like human. Kind of hard to tell apart, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty, it's pretty rank. <laughs> it's pretty what? It's pretty rank. When you, uh, when you first get it, but then after you have it a while, it, uh, it don't smell as bad, you know. You can use the smell. I had a, I had a five-gallon bucket of it in my freezer for a while, and <laughs> my wife got mad at me because you get rid of that or. I'm going to get rid of that with you. I can just see that. Well, what's all that shit in here? Why don't you let, I said, why don't you let me dry it in the microwave? Oh, oh, I'll get the closet, you know, put that fiberglass stuff over it and have it on black. So. She said, you put that in my microwave and you better not be home. I get you. I never did do it. I just finally threw it away. <laughs> I tried to I tried to dry some out in the air and the flies got into it and just you know it all the way. Well, never even thought of that. I thought a person could do it. I wanted to put it in the oven and she wouldn't let me do that. It dried out slowly, you know. I stayed out in the hot sun and 
I heard if you do that kind of stuff to it that it might take away some of the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care about it taking away the flavor. I just wanted to pull it out of the black. Yeah. Use one of those fruit dehydrators. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just right. to boil you know, it. You know, I have mean, some flavor. Trace peach and eat one since the hydrator. Those apples I did for you guys. It'd be just as good as those apples I did for you guys. I have some hair. I took you out of the bed. Yeah. See, Vance Sorcerer and I, we packed the bed out. I still have the bed. The hair is six years old now, and I keep it in a can. Uh, like a shortening can. Mm -hmm. And I have it in a Ziploc bag in that shortening can. And you can take it out of that can and open it up and it will make it throw up. The hair, it stinks the bag. Yeah. And it's six years old. Now, you know, it, it's helped that smell that long. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you put it in a microwave, it'd lose it. Well, I don't know. And then you wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of get out of this. I've got enough stuff to have a semi truckload of evidence of. Them. Well, has Ray wow. seen this? Have you seen? No, it's the first time I met the gentleman. Yeah. 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 I may open up a museum down on the coast here oh. this year, next year. I was gonna say that stuff would be nice in Ray's museum. <laughs> He's got his own. <laughs> One of here in Poland, Chris. <laughs> well, I had quite a bit. Well, you can put it in the glass. I sold quite a bit. I had uh, to the University of Idaho. Okay. They're opening up a museum over there on the university. I sold quite a bit to them, but I still have a, I still have a five minute story just full. Okay, um, can we tour it? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to bring it all down here pretty soon. It would really be interesting to see. Mm. It's still all up there? Yeah. How do you know somebody in the car? No, uh, I know by car, no. We've got Summerlin sitting out there with it. Is he? Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask you, Paul, when did you meet Wes? Oh, uh, long time ago. Quite a while, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember when I met him. It was after I seen the... After I've seen the Bigfoot. Had he been seeing the buckskin one before that? Oh, yeah, that old man has seen the Bigfoots in Blue Mountain for years, ever since yeah. he was a kid. Yeah, when he was doing the mules. I knew he did the yeah. mule thing and all that. Oh, yeah, when he was uh, doing uh, hunting lost people with dogs, he, he, he talked about seeing the Bigfoot. That's a long time. Oh, yeah, he's, he's been there his whole life. Uh, he's 77 years old. And Try to ride with him on horseback, and he'll just pretty near kill you. He's tougher than fine. Oh yeah, he's feisty. And every time you see him on something, he's just feisty. He's breaking horses. Yeah, oh. <coughs> he broke one. He's last only what? Just a little shorter than me, isn't he? he broke one last train. Yeah. Yes, somebody shorter than me. <laughs> 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 uh, nobody's shorter than you. Diane. Yeah, they find him up in the woods all the time. Well, that's about all I got to say, guys. On dwarfs. I am working on a. I am working on a video. Uh, I hope I'll have it done next year, and I'm also writing a book just on all my field reports and stuff that, you know, over the years. Good. It'll probably take me a couple of years or three to do that book, but I'm not no writer. I was going to get Peter to proofread it. Oh, no, I don't do that. But he said he charged me a thousand dollars. A page of the day. He don't read very well today. I'll go for my <laughs> Okay, we got another cast here. I have a question. Are you the one that was reading the book that was seen footprints in a snowfield going away from a farm? No. Over by Walla Walla. That was Milgram. Milgram had those up there. Remember, Jeff had them up there. I've got a lot of. I've got a lot of pictures of footprints in the snow. But but Paul had taken Milgram out. Oh. And Milgram found those, him and his brother, wasn't no, this it? Jeff, yeah. Yeah. No yeah. No Jeff and his brother. Yeah. Yeah. Can you reach that from there? Yeah. Well, I wanted to get the data yeah. on my hand, too. Mine is uh, February 4th, 95. 7, 4, 95, and where? How big is Where'd you get it? Well, it was up on Dry Creek. Dry Creek, okay. I know. Out of Walla Walla, about 35 miles. Okay. How wide is that hand? I don't know. You never, never measured it ever? Uh, Anybody got a tape? Yeah, they're, they're real tight. Yeah. I do. I mean, it's like hers. Do you want a tape? I'm huh? just going to make them, man. I don't know. Don't break. 
finger oh, you all right. It's made out of uh, <coughs> made out of uh,